fall is here and it's time to find some fall lipstick inspiration. So I've been digging through my lipstick drawer to find what lipsticks I'm going to be reaching for this fall and I'm going to give you some fall lipstick swatches on my lips and on the back of my hand too just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be reaching for. I am more of a nude peachy pink spring summer lipstick girl so I really have to kind of dig when it comes to fall lipstick colors. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone to wear a dark or bright or vampy lip color. And I think a lot of you are probably like that too. So hopefully this video will give you some ideas and inspiration. But first, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you back here with me on a regular basis. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I have a few color categories here and I'm gonna start with nudes. And I know that may seem weird to have a nude category for a fall lip, but when you're doing a dark smoky eye, sometimes you want a good nude lip. My nudes in the summer and spring are a little more peachy and pink and crisper, whereas in the fall, I want them to have a cooler, more gray undertone, but without making me look like a corpse or look dead, and that can kind of be hard to do. And the first nude that I'm going to mention is Marc Jacobs' Sonic Truth. It's a perfect, to me, fall nude because it's cut with just enough pink to where it doesn't totally gray you out. This is one that I had on the other day on social media and I had a fall eye on and you guys wanted a tutorial on that look. It just goes perfectly with a lot of smoky eyes because it is cut with just enough pink to where it's nude enough, but yet it doesn't make you look like a corpse. And that's what you want. It looks really pink on the hand, but you can see on the lips that it just really works with a nude eye or a smoky eye. And I'll probably throw this in a tutorial at some point. Now I know I've worn it in plenty of videos, but it works. It is a great all around year round nude that I especially like to pull out in the fall. The consistency of these is wonderful. It's matte but not too matte and it's not drying and that is something that I look for in all of my lipsticks. Rimmel Lasting Finish by Kate number 45 is the second pale nude that's cut with just enough pink to not wash you out. This is my second favorite nude for fall that goes with any smoky eye, any neutral look. I love the Rimmel formula. I have a couple of Rimmel favorites in this video. It's creamy, it's not drying. It does have a little bit of a scent to it, but it does go away once I put it on the lips, to me anyway. I just find these lipsticks really nice. This one, number 45, is a great one for fall if you want a nude. I've raved about the Marc Jacobs liquid lipsticks ever since I discovered them on my channel. I just think that they are so perfect in formula. And this one is called Fawn Over Me. It's a nude, but it is cut with a little bit of peach, terracotta, if you will. And I just, I can't rave enough about these. They are the perfect consistency. They apply beautifully. They're not your traditional liquid lipsticks in that they have a more whipped, moussey formula. There is some transfer with these, but they still remain on the lips somehow. There's a few formulas out there now like that. The Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche Liquefied Lips are a lot like that. The NARS Velvet Lip Glides are a lot like that. And I feel like this formula is great for those of us who really want moisturized lips but want a long wearing lip product and that is what this is. And this is just a fantastic nude if you want maybe a little bit of a warmer nude for fall with a little bit of a lighter terracotta shade mixed in that kind of goes with everything. Speaking of terracotta, I'm transitioning from the nudes category and moving slowly into the browner, more rust terracotta territory with Urban Decay Vice in Insanity. And I can't get this open. So this has some definite terracotta orangey brown tones. It's a little bit deeper and a great wearable everyday shade that's not light enough to necessarily be called a nude, but it's got some nice warm undertones to it that's really, really great for fall. And I love the Vice formula. This one is their cream formula within the Vice line, which I find to be extremely moisturizing and wonderful and comfortable on the lips. 
slightly cooler in tone is ColourPop Lippy Stick in Parker. I really like these. I find them to be moisturizing, but to have kind of a demi matte finish on the lips. And I really like the shade. It's got just enough brown to it that it's wearable and it does have a little bit of a paint to it, but not too much. So this is a really great not too deep fall lipstick if you want something that's great for the office or work and don't want to go too deep but want more of a punch than a nude and this formula is great and I like the way they smell too. I'm going a little bit deeper with a lips but better shade but that is a little bit deeper than your lips with the Tarte Lip Sculptor in kind. I have talked about this before on my channel and you have a lipstick on this end, super creamy. It's got all kinds of vitamins and things that are wonderful for you in it and a lip gloss on this end. So you really get a lot for your money with this product and they run sales all the time. I feel like I'm always getting emails from Tarte for sales on their website. This is a wonderful, wonderful product. My lips always feel super hydrated and moist, but it lasts a long time on the lips. And this color is just beautiful and very wearable, yet deep enough to be great for fall. I feel like we heard a lot about the MAC Lip Tensities for a hot minute and then they just completely disappeared. This one is in the shade Smoked Almond. I also have the shade Doe, but I don't wear smoked almond as much year round because it's a little bit deeper and it has that brownish undertone even though it is somewhat of a neutral, but you can see there are some orangey undertones in there that I think to me make it a perfect wearable everyday shade for fall. These are so creamy yet long wearing. Yes, there's transfer, but these wear so beautifully. These are some of my favorite formulas for lipsticks and Smoked Almond is a beautiful, beautiful fall shade. Look at that. It's so pretty. MAC Retro is a compliment getter every time I wear it. And for someone who doesn't wear a lot of dark lipsticks, that's saying a lot. I feel like it's close enough to red. I guess it's kind of almost a brick color, but it's not red. And I don't know what it is about it, but every single time I wear it, I get at least one compliment that day from a stranger. It's bizarre. The first time it happened, I thought, okay. The second time it happened, mm, okay, all right. The third time it was starting to get a little strange and now it's just almost normal. So this is a go-to fall lipstick for me. I got it last fall with the help of the girl in the MAC store and I'm so glad that I got this lipstick. It's just been a great purchase for me. Again, I say I don't wear a ton of dark lipsticks a lot, but this is one that is a staple for me. It's just a great, great lipstick. I have another Rimmel by Kate lipstick. This one is in shade number 47, which looks pretty light in the bullet. And it's got those same brick orangey undertones of the retro and what did I talk about? Oh, the smoked almond. It's very similar, but it gives you a less expensive option if you don't want to get the lip tensity in smoked almond. And it's another creamy lipstick and I love it. I love the formula, which we already covered. And the shade again is perfect for fall. It's got that terracotta brick undertone, the creaminess that you want, especially when it's starting to get colder outside and you don't want your lips to get dry. So I do recommend number 47 Rimmel by Kate. If you're looking for a true liquid lipstick traditional formula in the same vein of the colors we've been looking at, Kat Von D Lolita 2 is very similar on me with that orangey terracotta undertone. And it's got the longevity and the lasting power of a traditional liquid lip. It's a little drying for me personally. I don't pull it out as much as I do a lot of these other ones for that reason, but there's a lot of people out there that really like a traditional liquid lipstick. So I wanted to throw this out there. I feel like this reads differently on different people. 
Um, it, you know, it reads on me very similar to how it is on the back of my hand, that terracotta rust undertone. Um, some people have said it's a little more rosy on them, but that's not how it is on me. This is a great fall lipstick if you want one that's gonna last a long time, if you need all day wear. I had Burt's Bees number 530 in Lily Lake on in a video recently, and a lot of you asked me about it. It's a really pretty berry shade that normally I would think about wearing a berry shade like this in the spring, but it works really well in the fall to me because it kind of brightens up your lips and it's not a bright berry, it's more of a deep berry shade. It's really pretty and this formula is pretty creamy. I found that the first time I put it on and took a sip of coffee, I didn't have a ton of transfer and it actually lasted a pretty decent amount of time on my lips, which I wasn't expecting from such a creamy formula. So I've actually really been enjoying this lipstick. I like the way it looks. Sometimes you want a berry color in the fall and I think this is a great option if you want something that's moisturizing and will give you a perk to your face. This next one is a Maybelline lipstick. It's number 280 in Rum Reach. Oh, and I didn't take the sticker off. I hate that, I gotta get that sticker off. I don't like leaving those on. Um, it reminds me a little bit of MAC Retro. I don't know if I'm crazy, but it's got a little bit of that rust brick undertone and a little bit of rose in there too, I feel like I see. It's a great fall lipstick that would go wonderfully with any lip look. It's a little bit deeper on the lips. It's actually what I have on right now. And I've been loving it for a great fall lip when you just want something that's gonna look nice but not make you look ghostly. It's just perfect to me for a, a, a fall lip. I actually have the next two swatched right next to each other because originally when I had them swatched on my hands separately, they kind of seem the same to me. They don't look the same on the lips, I don't think, but these are two vampy lipsticks if you want something that's not black, but not super, super over the top, but you still want a vampy look. So I have here Revlon Super Lustrous in Black Cherry, which is one of their classic colors. It's a very creamy consistency. And I have Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche in Nori. And this is a tiny one because I got it in last year's holiday sampler set. I can't remember the exact name of that set. It was in my Sephora recommendations video from last fall. These are what they look like on the hand. And I'm just parking them right under each swatch. And you can see the Nori is a little bit more brown and a little bit deeper than the Revlon, even though I feel like in the bullet, the Revlon looks deeper, but it applies a little more sheer. And they're both beautiful and of course, to me, very fall. I would not personally wear these in the spring, but that's just my style. I just prefer lighter, brighter colors overall for me. And everybody's tastes are different and personal preferences are different. That's just me. Some people would wear these colors year round and that is completely fine too. I do have three lip liners that I like for fall when I'm not wearing one of the nude lips but better colors that I wear year round. They're a little bit deeper. They have more of a spice undertone to them. So they pair with a lot of these lipsticks a little bit better than my lighter lip liners do. The first is Laura Mercier Potpourri Lip Liner, and I've used this so much I've got a crack in the lid. Then we have Rimmel in Epic and Rimmel in, what is this called? Spice. And so here they are swatched underneath each lip liner. And that's what they look like. And I do like the formula of all of these, and I think they're pretty darn good for fall. So there you have it, my fall lipstick roundup. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas for some lipsticks and lipstick shades to wear in the fall. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're not following me on social media, I'll put those on the screen and down below because I'd love to have you over there too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.